Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 25 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning to build a self-leveling platform based on the most excellent uh, Adafruit BNO055 non-axis sensor and an Arduino Nano. What I'm going to need you to do today is pour yourself a nice hot cup of coffee I'm going to need you to get out your gear from last week and I'm going to need you to get ready to learn something new. Okay, as always, I'm going to take a second and give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. Your help is very much appreciated and you are keeping me in premium coffee beans. And what you should know by now is it is coffee that fuels this entire video production operation. So I want to give you guys a, a big Big thank you. Those of you who are not helping yet, think about looking in the description down below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping over there and hooking a brother up. Okay, but enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's get ready to learn something new. Now, where we left off in lesson number 24, we had built our first control system and the control system was basically based on applying a correction signal that was always one degree so it doesn't matter if you're 45 degrees from the target or two degrees from the target the correction signal always changed by one and the nice thing about that is it works it'll take a second here to get this thing uh, booted up and the sensors uh, coming to life but basically the nice thing about this is is that it works and the bad thing about it it is slow i'm going to reset the arduino there to make sure that it's got the thing uh, starting with a clean start okay now there it goes all right so what you see is is that as i change it it always brings it back to level this is where we ended up in lesson number 24. OK, but what you can see is, is that the problem is the correction signal is the same whether the error is 45 degrees or the error is 2 degrees. And so let's hop over and look at that on our serial monitor where you will be wanting to look at the orange signal because that is going to be the orange signal on this graph is going to be our error. Well right now as I'm sitting nice and still my error is zero but if I introduce like a 45 degree error I will need to turn this thing on for you to see it. Let's let it come to life here. Okay, it is alive. So now what I'm going to do is be watching the orange curve. I'm going to introduce a 45 degree error signal. And then you can see one degree at a time, it eliminates that 45 degree error. What is the nice thing about this? It is very, very, very stable. You can see that the correction is, is roughly linear. Then in a linear fashion, it cor corrects uh, the error. And basically, the feedback system drives the error to zero one degree at a time. But this is what the problem is. The problem is the correction signal is always one degree or minus one degree. Uh, to drive the error to zero and that's the correction signal whether you have an error of 45 degrees or you have an error of one degree and what you can see is you would really like this thing to run faster so what you would like is well if you have a 45 degree error maybe instead of correcting by one degree maybe you should correct by 20 degrees 22 degrees what you would like is your correction signal to be proportional to your error signal. So instead of just feeding back a correction of one degree, how about if you fed back a correction that was like half of the error? So if our error was 45, we would feed back a correction of 22 degrees. Now we would have an error of say 22 degrees. Now we would feed back 11, 
with an 11 degree remaining and then five degrees and two degrees and so with just a very small number of hops we're going to drive the error to zero we're going to drive the error to zero much much quicker than just doing it one degree at a time and if we do this right what i think that we will be able to do is we'll be able to have something that is both snappy and stable okay that's the goal snappy operates quickly and is stable and you can see that this is very stable in its operation snappy not so much okay so let's go ahead and turn this off and let's get ready to learn about a proportional control system a proportional control system so what i will need you to do is fire up your trusty arduino you can see as always we're starting with bare minimum i don't want to develop the code from scratch so let's go on over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com you'll want to go to the non-axis imu lesson 24 that's where we left off in the last lesson <coughs> we need to click on the little double page icon that selects the program control a and then control c to copy it let's come back to arduino control a to select everything control v to paste it and now we have that code that we ended up it with in lesson number 24. let's just look at the high points here real quickly so we'll remember exactly what we were doing you can see that we started by loading all of our libraries that's pretty straightforward we then created our two servo objects the pitch servo and the roll servo we then created our quaternion variables we're going to have four quaternions remember three are imaginary and one is real so we kind of create that imaginary room with a real number line in it we've got our quaternions defined and now to do the control system there's really kind of like for roll and for pitch there's each one four variables that we're going to need roll target is where you would like to be okay roll target is where you would like to be roll actual is where you are and then roll error is the difference between your roll actual and your roll target and then the the roll servo value is the value that you feed back to the servos well initially i want to line those servos up in the center of their operation so initially i'm just going to put them at 90 and 90. so similarly for pitch we've got the target we've got the actual we've got the error and then we've got the servo valve then we start getting ready to fire up our bno 055 with a couple of parameters okay in our void setup we actually turn on the bno 055 we give it a second and then we do some other bookkeeping on that sensor getting it ready to go and now we've got to tell the program where we have the two servos connected you can see we've got roll servo connected to pin 2 and we have pitch servo connected to pin 3 then we're going to apply those initial write values to kind of get them in a central location and then we come down to the void loop and in the void loop we are now ready to start doing our control system we start by pulling the quaternions off of the BNO 055 and then we assign them to the variables Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 and then from those quaternions we then turn them into the two parameters that we want the actual Euler roll and the actual Euler pitch okay if you're not understanding this go back to the earlier lessons because I explain it exhaustively in the earlier lessons okay then we calculate our roll error and our pitch error <clears throat> and now this is where we actually do the control system and what we say is if the pitch error is greater than one and a half degrees what do we do well we feed back one degree each time through the loop until the error is not greater than 1.5 or if it's less than negative 1.5 we we feed back a negative one to pull that error off and so basically with these two if statements we drive the pitch error to zero in some number of cycles through here and similarly with the roll error we do the same thing we're doing the correction one degree at a time okay now what I want you to see is the problem is if the error is 45 and we correct it one degree at a time it takes it a long time to drive that error out so you could say well correct it 10 degrees at a time no what you want to do is you want to correct it by an amount that's proportional to the error 
by amount that's proportional to the error. So if the error was 45, what if we fed back each time half the error? Well, the first time through, I would go from 45 to 22, and then to 11, and then to 5, and then to 2, and then to 1, and then I would be in that range that we're targeting. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to feed back to the servos each time half the error. Also, I want us to be a little more clever and see how we can do this on, let's say, on our pitch error. We can do it with one if statement and not two if we're smart. And the way we would do this is get rid of our second if statement and do it with one. But instead of pitch error is greater than 1.5 and pitch error is less than negative uh, 1.5, we could just do the if statement if the absolute value of pitch error is greater than 1.5. That handles both cases with one if statement. But you say, but your sign was different down inside the loop. Yeah, but what you got to see is, is that uh, what I'm going to do is instead of adding one, I'm going to add a term instead of one degree, I'm going to add a term that is proportional to the error. So I'm going to say pitch error. Well, I don't want to apply and try to correct it in one step. So I'm going to say pitch error divided by two. So that would remove half the error on each iteration. But now the first time, I want to make sure that I'm not misthinking my signs. I believe that I should add as a positive the pitch error. If pitch error is negative, then it would be subtracting. If it's positive, it would be adding. And so that would eliminate it in either case. But if I'm not thinking about the sign correctly, I don't want it to smash my fingers or overdrive the servos. So I want to slow it a little down a little bit. And I'm going to take out a quarter of the error each time through the loop. OK, and now we fix that. Now we're going to come down here and do the same thing with roll error. I'm going to say if the absolute value of roll error is greater than 1.5, then row servo val is equal to row servo val plus what? Row error divided by 4. So the correction signal, the signal that I'm feeding back into my servo value is a quarter of what the error is. And this should be slow. OK, it should be slow enough that I can turn it off if I've got my signs right. But it also is going to be a lot faster than the old way of doing it. Because if the error was 45 and we took out a fourth of the error, our first correction is going to take out 10 degrees of error instead of one degree of error. OK, I hope that makes sense. OK, so I'm going to come over here. <clears throat> this is one of those cases where I really need two right hands. It's hard to type. I'm going to start by turning this on so it fires things to life. OK. And now I'm going to come over and I'm going to try to, I'm going to first of all make sure that I turned off, which I hadn't, that error signal. OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this. And then it should flatten it out once I download it with a little look. Still downloading. It's downloaded. OK, look at that. I think it took out the error, but now let's look. I'm going to turn it this way. Wow, look at that. Boom. Do you see how quickly that is correcting compared to the old way? OK, I'm going to come back. And so now let me turn that serial monitor back on that serial plotter. And let me fire that thing up. OK, so now watch the orange. I am going to put like a 45 degree error on pitch. And so you'll be watching the orange curve. And look at that. That thing took that out very, very quickly. I'll go 45 degrees this way. And just in a small number of iterations, it is taking the air out. And also, if you look at the orange curve, you can see that there's very little overshoot. It's bringing it in for a very smooth landing. And this thing is just super snappy. We're doing the roll now, which the roll error is in blue. OK, and you can see the roll is working quickly. We can roll and pitch at the same time. And it has no problems dealing with both of those very, very quickly. 
Okay, so that is looking good. And now since that's working so well, we'll mess around with it till we break it. But what you can see is if that works so well, okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this serial monitor off and come back over here. So the question is, can we make it run faster and still be stable? Well, if we wanted to make it run faster, what would we change? we would change the amount of corrections. So instead of taking out a quarter of the error each loop through each time through the loop, we could take out half the error. So we would divide by two and divide by two. So let's see how that's going to look. I'm going to pull it up here, turn this back, turn the servos back on, give it a chance to kind of come to life and then I am going to download the program. Looks like it's downloading pretty well. Okay, it is downloaded and it has come to life. So now let's look and see how snappy it is. Wow, look how quick that is leveling this thing. It is just a few signals and the error is driven to zero. Okay, let's take a look at that on the serial monitor and let's see if you, it, on the serial plotter, and let's see if you can see how much snappier this thing is. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. It'll restart the program. Okay, let's give it a second to find it's zero. Okay, so now I'm going to go like that. Wow, look at that. You see how quickly that error is going out. Now you notice one thing though is what is something that you notice different? Let's look at just, I'll try to do just pitch. And so let's look just at the orange curve. Well, actually it's not overshooting too much. It looks like it's overshooting by about a degree. Let me turn those other ones off and just see if I can look at just pitch without the other signals and maybe it'll be a little easier to look at. Okay, so now we're looking at just pitch. Actually, there's not much overshoot at all. Okay, so this is pretty stable, but you can see that it might overshoot by about a degree. But let me, uh, let me kind of zoom in here and let you guys see this a little closer. This is really pretty amazing. See, see, I can move it and as I'm moving it, it does a pretty good, darn jo good job of staying really close to zero error as I'm moving it. And then if I move it really fast and you get an error, it drives that error out very quickly. And you can see that in the graph, how what for such a small period of time that you end up with any error. The error is driven out really, really, really quickly. Okay, guys, so let's think about this. This is actually an important part of control theory. So in the in the lesson number 24, we were able to drive the error to zero and keep the thing flat, but we did sort of a constant feedback, and it was just sort of like a dumb thing. If you're too much, make it smaller by one. If you're too little, make it bigger by one. And so just by changing one degree at a time, we could always end up at our target value and it would do it in a pretty stable way. But the downside being that the thing was kind of, uh, the thing was kind of sluggish, not very snappy. What you can see that we learned today is, is that rather than making a fixed value for the feedback, a constant feedback, we made the feedback proportional to the error. So if you have a big error, you put a big correction and as the error gets smaller and smaller, your correction gets smaller and smaller. It's kind of like landing an airplane. You just land that airplane very, very smoothly and you come in for a perfect landing on your target. Okay, actually, <clears throat> the more sophisticated way to do it is it's what's called a PID controller and P is for proportional, I is for integral, and D is for derivative. And so in this particular implementation I've shown you today, it was basically a P controller for proportional. Now the way a PID controller works is it also puts in an additional term, which is basically 
the speed, like how quickly the air is changing. And if the air is changing quickly, you bring an extra signal in to try to stop it from ever having a fixed offset. So you, you sort of trigger and correct, not just on the magnitude of the error, but on the speed of the error. And that allows you to kind of nip errors in the bud, like right when it sees it's changing, it sees that speed signal and it brings it back. So D is derivative, and that's a math term, that's a calculus term, but the derivative is kind of like rate of change or speed. And so a PID controller would have one component of the correction that is proportional to the error. It will have another component of the correction that you're feeding back that is proportional to the derivative or the speed of the error. And then the third parameter is the area under the error curve. There's a, a, a term that's proportional to the area under the error curve. And that sort of takes out long-term drift types of things. So what you learned today was you learned how to do a P controller in most of the things in control theory where you're really doing this in industrial applications, you would not just do P, but you would do PID. And so those would be the other two things you would want to add is the I and the D. But the big thing that you see is, is man, you can do a whole lot just with a P controller, and you can see how much better the P control algorithm works than just the constant offset, which we showed in lesson number 24. I do believe that this was a homework assignment was anybody able to do it without seeing what I did? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of success you guys had at this. Was anybody able to do this? Did anybody kind of get to this point? Give me a little feedback about uh, where you guys are on, on figuring out your homework. OK, leave me a comment whether this lesson made sense or not. You know, let me know if this is kind of resonating because this is getting a little bit away from circuits and a little bit away from programming and getting a little bit more into control theory and wanting to know if you guys are interested in this and if you have been able to follow along. OK, hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. When you give us a thumbs up, it ha ha helps us have other people find these videos. The algorithms and the bots, they actually count those thumbs up. It allows this video to be seen by more people. So really appreciate that. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, make sure that you ring the bell. You click the little bell icon and you will get notifications when I do future lessons. OK, guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.